This idea has been suggested to us hundreds, if not thousands of times over the years. Launching a CO2 capsule out of our mass accelerator. The problem is, a CO2 capsule does not even come close to fitting. Well, good news everyone! Uh, Evan Perry, our resident mad scientist, was taking some stuff out to his trash and saw a bunch of, of these CO2 looking capsules. They were blue, so they might have been nitrous oxide used for making uh, whipped cream or maybe his neighbors are, you know, huff the stuff, who knows. But anyway, he measured them carefully and found that they fit. Then he polished them up to a beautiful sheen, as you can see here, and sent them on to us. Now, of course, all these are empty, but they do weigh about half an ounce or about 15.6 grams. Now we got six of these things, so we'll launch one plane and see if it'll fly straight through the air. Then we'll start adding different lengths of Kevlar uh, strands to the tail. A lot of viewers have suggested that if we, if we just put a ribbon on the back of these projectiles, that'll cause it to, you know, fly straight through the air, even at supersonic conditions. So let's get out there and see if any of these will hit a target. All right. Well, we got something new from Evan. The uh... these before I before you start up. Uh, people have been wanting me to do these for years. Oh, CO two cartridges. Yeah, yes. and it's normally they don't fit. So anyway, go ahead. Uh, this guy is scary. He comes up with some stuff that you never think would work. Yeah, we call well. him a mad scientist. Well, evidently he's turned these down to the point where now they will fit down a 12 gauge bore. So, like Jeff said, all you guys have been requesting a CO2 cartridge. They aren't charged, they're popped. And he's got some little tails on them. Made out of old more and more and more threads and more. from an old Kevlar vest. And uh, so we're gonna go through the numbers. He's got them all numbered, one through six. I'm gonna shoot them into a Kevlar vest at 10 yards to start with. See how they do. If they do good, we'll move the vest back a little further. Yeah, and this is a job for little Tony. Oh, yes. Number one. Number one. It fits. Yay. We're going to go for that uh, faded out green square there. Okay. I don't think it hit. Oh. That's not a good sign that they're accurate. Well, the first one, which had no tassels or anything on it, uh, performed horribly. It just nosedived straight to the ground and then flipped and flopped its way into the cornfield. Somehow it missed hitting our table and further destroying it. Yeah, that one just nosedived and went under the table. We're lucky we didn't hit the table. My wife would have been very upset. You know, that's her yard ta sale table. <laughs> so let's. Let's try going through the Benelli with a rifle choke. I don't think they'll even in, these will even engage with the rifling. Yeah, if they're sitting in a shot cup, it's a possibility. Ye yeah, the shot cup may, may, may latch onto it. If it'll grab a hold of this. Yeah. And this one's got little feathers in it. Yeah, about two inches of Kevlar. Let's give that a try. No problem. Yeah, up. Oh. I'm armed now. Okay, I'm ready when you are. Okay, here we go. Center mass. <laughs> Not looking good. Not looking good. Okay, number three, it's got a little longer tassels on it. So far, it's not looking good. Okay, anytime you're ready. There, hey, finally. Hey, finally got some contact. That was center mass point of aim. Good. Well, it looks like the third time's the charm. Danny finally hit that vest, even that that very close range of 10 yards. The funny thing is, uh, when people watch these videos, they'll actually blame the shooter for how the projectiles miss, even though you can clearly see that they're 
not flying straight and they're curving through the air and stuff. And the scary thing is they're not joking, they're, they're dead serious. But what's amazing here is even though the steel capsule hit a soft Kevlar vest, how much damage the vest did to the capsule. Yeah, we got a recovery here. Look at that. <laughs> it's like a tube of toothpaste or something. It hit flat right in here somewhere. That's a lot of force. And not it, bad. Was, that, poor name was right in here, so. That's not bad. <laughs> Let me get a close-up of that. Feels like it hit right there. Okay. Yeah, it looks about right. You feel the, I see some Kevlars. You feel the impression on the back of it. There's <laughs> yeah. a bit of his paint. Yeah, yeah. Kevlar. Number three. It's a good Patreon thing if somebody wants it. <laughs> okay, we're up to number four. It's just got a few more extra little tassels on it. Oh, I think, way right. Yeah, yeah. I saw the vest move, but it could have been the wadding. Even with the longer tassels on there, you can see that the capsule never really stabilizes. In fact, it, it starts flying sideways and then it starts flying backwards again. Hopefully you understand that if a projectile isn't flying in a predictable, stable manner, well, the accuracy is not going to be very predictable either. Number five. One of the long, these are almost a foot long, I think. I'm ready whenever you are. Now that one, that was dead center, I think. Uh, I think it's laying there on the table. Now, I think this one hit the steel frame that's kind of propping up our vest here. But uh, look at the damage of that thing. I'm, I'm kind of surprised the Kevlar remained intact but that thing's flattened out like a spoon. That's not very weak steel. You, I, don't, I couldn't even bend that with my hands. So uh, really surprising how much damage that thing sustained. In order to get the right amount of support, we had to launch these things backwards so that the wadding was pushing on that big blunt end. But even with the longer tassels, it's still not enough drag to stabilize the projectile. Okay, last one, number six, another long tail, Kevlar tail on it. Hopefully hit it, I'm ready. Oh yeah. Well, if anything, hopefully we satisfied everyone's curiosity about whether these steel capsules would make good projectiles or not. They obviously don't. Very very unpredictable results. I'm just happy we were finally able to test these things out and I appreciate the fact that Evan stepped up to the plate and actually made some of these and sent them to us. So thank you Evan, thank you for watching and thank you to all our Patreon supporters.